this is going to be a very different type of debrief. I've got the whole team gathered here today. Thanks everyone for coming in this room. Welcome to a meeting all about you guys. So I've got a first slide here that's just a simple introduction, and this is just saying basically like, hey, look, what I'm hoping to do in this is just uh, talk about the importance of understanding the Myers-Briggs uh, personality type uh, indicator uh, in, in virtual production, you know, in our settings. I'm going to hopefully show you some insights of how we can use our personality types that we have to help hopefully elevate and continue to elevate Socially U to a world-class studio experience. And I want to show uh, and talk through some examples once we have some things identified about our personalities and how that may affect. Now, before we go further, I got to give this disclaimer for all of you, which is just simply that this is a tool that shows a aspect of who you are as a person. So there's no way this is so robust that it fully encapsulates everything you are as a human. Duh. Okay. So look, this is ish. But it's a starting point, and I think it will help push some conversations through. Now, Tyler, we've looked at a number of personality type things over the years. <laughs> so, and there's so many options. So just know, like, man, there's the Enneagram, and there's that has its own cult following. And then there's, you know, there's the DISC profile, and there's, there's all these different tools. There's tons of them. This isn't better or worse, but what I have found for me personally is the Myers-Briggs is a tool that I can keep straight in my head. And as I'm working with somebody, I can kind of push into, oh, I think they're an E or an I, and and kind of start to get some assumptions about the type of person they are. And, and so uh, it's a helpful kind of little system for me to work through uh, to somewhat quickly identify the type of personality I'm working with so that I can best interact with them. Okay, so just a quick, what in the world is Myers-Briggs? <laughs> it's these four indicators. Each one of them are dichotomies. And it's going to plot you on the scale from an extreme extrovert to an extreme introvert. So you're either an E or an I uh, in, in the Myers-Briggs world. And depending on your score, you may be just barely an E, or you may be the most E <laughs> that there is. Uh, so these two are uh, diametrically opposite of each other. And so sensing and intuition. So sensing is really uh, firmly based in, in sensory. I've touched it. I felt it. I can experience it versus intuition. I think, you know, what I'm really feeling is that we're probably just going to, if I think through the situation, I think they're going to do this, right? So it's uh, one is assumptionary based based off of the understanding of the world uh, through through your senses is the other way where it's like, no, I actually have to touch this and feel it and really understand it to know that this is true. And then the next is thinking and feeling. So one is in its extreme form, thinking is all about the logic. The only thing that matters is the logic. I don't care if you're sad, you're wrong. Two plus two does not equal five. Uh, feeling is saying, hey, I, I, I see that you thought two plus two equals five, but let's work through that and help you get to the right answer because it's wrong and saying it in some way that makes the person not feel sad. So feeling indicating people are much more attuned to the emotional, spiritual side of the person, I guess. And uh, the thinking person is the more pragmatic, uh, connected to just the procedural, like these are the facts, just the facts, ma'am. Uh, and then last is judging and perceiving. So judging uh, in its extreme sees the whole world as black and white. Uh, it's, it's either, it is either right or it's wrong. They're very focused on justice uh, and um, things being very um, exactly um, set up and executed and perceiving is more um, the world is mostly gray instead of the world is mostly black and white uh, from a judging perspective. Okay. So these are these four letters and together you're either, so you're either an E or an I, an S and an N, a T or an F or a J or a P. So um, you're, you're some combination of these four. And so when you do that, it 
turns out to be the 16 personality types that I've got here on the screen. And so here's these different letters. You may or may not remember your letters. I'm going to put your names up here in just one second. So obviously, uh, we're, we can't Enca encapsulate all of those. So when we look at this as our team, we are these combination of uh, different things here. So just to kind of quickly hit these, uh, Andre ENTP, inventive, enthusiastic, strategic, enterprising, Morgan, idealistic, organized, insightful, dependable, compassionate, Isaac, caring, enthusiastic, idealist, idealistic, organized, diplomatic response, uh, Jay and Tyler. So this is interesting. You both have the same letters, <laughs> um, which is interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute. Enthusiastic, creative, spontaneous, optimistic. <laughs> Josh is friendly, outgoing, reliable, conscientious. Emma, action-oriented, logical, analytical, spontaneous. Cami is gentle, sensitive, nurturing, and helpful. So, so uh, the other thing you can see is that we have three introverts, four extroverts. Okay, so that's another kind of way you can kind of see this uh, breakdown of of the people that we have here. And then you can see we have a lot of P's. So Emma, Cami, Andre, Jay, Tyler are all P's, and Morgan, Isaac, and Josh are J's. Um, and so we'll kind of look a little more into this in just a second, but remember your letters. Um, everybody got their letter. Yep. Great. Tyler, okay. if you can remind me. Later. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the worst graphic. <laughs> I just pulled it from like, it's so low quality. I apologize for it. And I'm probably breaking a copyright sticking this in here, but anyway, here's, here's somebody's graphic on this. So now you can kind of look at this and see they're kind of breaking it into these four kind of quadrants of people, diplomats, sentinels, analysts, and explorers. So you can kind of take a look at that and see where you are on that. And then you can see your little four letters and you can see kind of a little name. Uh, Cami, what's your, what's your composter? Oh, you're the composter, <laughs> <laughs> a composer, oh, uh, composer. Cool. Yeah, I can't even yeah, read. Yeah. Composer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you were just being dumb. No. Uh, yeah. So, um, so you can kind of see, uh, see those there. Okay. Man, I'm going to kind of skip this, but just know there's a whole other, like if you're watching this on video, you can take a screenshot of this. I just pulled this from a Wikipedia article about Myers-Briggs. Hey, listen, there's all kinds of controversy. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Uh, whatever. We're Mostly not going to. the Jays that hate it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're going to skip, you know, who loves it and who hates it and, and move straight into it. All right. So let's look at each person. And uh, I want to show uh, <laughs> um, uh, everybody what, what we are. It, this is straight from Claude. So what I did is I plugged in everybody's personality and I was like, hey, give us, give me like a quick sentence on strength, weakness, communication style and how to best work with the person. Okay. So I figured I'd go first. So, um, so I'm an ENTP. Uh, this is just straight from Claude, no editing. So innovative, strategic, adaptable, excels at brainstorming. Weaknesses may struggle with follow through and can become bored with routine tasks. Uh, communication style enjoys lively debates and generating new ideas. How to work best with Andre, provide opportunities to create problem solving and be open to unconventional ideas. So uh, Pretty spot you, on. I was going to say, as you hear that, do you think that's a good reflection of of me <laughs> i guess yes yeah 100 yeah. percent. i think okay. it's it's weird seeing you with like what could be hair i know right <laughs> yeah it was so, really bad that threw me off. it's this really uh Too it's pain. this i was in uh, colorado a few weeks ago and it's like this super fuzzy hat it's the only thing i have that even looks like i have hair so i i wanted to take that picture and bring it on there and so. that, that hits the nail on the head and yeah, describes you pretty well the board with routine tasks i think you may have invented a word or administrivia yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and you'll see uh, one other thing that's interesting that um, is different about me than the rest of the team is I score really high numbers. So I'm very uh, extreme in those ways. So I'm, I'm, I'm very extroverted. I'm very intuition. I'm very thinking and super perceiving. So that doesn't mean I'm like better at it. I don't mean like that. I just mean I'm very much those things where you'll see some of the rest of us are kind of on the line. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the line like that, like if you're 1% or 2%, it could be that you're really more of an S than an N, you know? So, but for me, I would say I probably, <laughs> even if I went back and answered the questions again, 
I'm still probably an ENTP. Like there's, you know, like even if I varied a little bit, I'm not going to vary so much that I'm going to move over into these other letters. So where the rest of you seem a little more adaptable than, than my ridiculousness. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Let's do Josh next. I've got Josh ready. Oh, look at this picture I look found of you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, sir. Hey, it Good was on your Lord. Facebook, so I felt like it was fair game. And uh, look at that. I mean, it is the man. public domain. Come so on. That's on me. Looking good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, you're the strategist, an ENTJ strategist. Strengths, decisive, efficient, and skilled at long-term planning and goal setting. Weaknesses may appear intimidating or inflexible at times. Communication style is direct, logical, and focused on results. How to best work with him, be prepared, provide data-driven insights, and respect his decision-making process. So, Josh, you're the newest guy to the team. Kind of react to that. As you hear that, how does that feel for you? Yeah, so I'm pretty familiar with the Myers-Briggs uh, yeah. profile. I've, I've taken this for taken this before, and this is roughly what I score. Over my life, I've actually varied a little bit on the introvert-extrovert scale, but everything else is the same. Uh, I oh, think it, yeah. I think it hits pretty well. Just first, first pass. Thanks, Claude. <laughs> I was wondering about the T yeah. and F cause you're that 1% T, uh, I've got kind of your little graph there. So I didn't know, I thought you were about to say I've varied back and forth. I thought you were going to say T and F, uh, because of that. Yeah, that's fair. That's, I don't know. I don't remember yeah. where I fell on the graph yeah, yeah. previously. Yeah. What, what, what uh, does that mean though? Talk about Andre. In uh -huh. your experience of Myers Briggs, what does it mean to be smack in the middle, almost? Yeah, of thinking and feeling. Well, it just means you, you know, like with Josh, it may be important to also look at an E N F. Uh, whoops, you're a J. I got you as a P. You know what? The guy who made these does. <laughs> the uh, correct E N T J is correct. By yeah, the way. yeah. That's uh, just uh, please hold. But, I'm gonna the, just so hop off of the screen feeling, for a second. Let me fix that. Like thinking thinkers are very into the thought, very the ideas, and they're not really as concerned with the feelings of, that are associated with it. Where Josh may be able to perceive those feelings and be take those into account, um, as and it, as well as be able to think about the the overarching principles and ideas. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I got uh, distracted by my bad graphic. Uh, placement there. But yeah, so now we could go back to that slide. So, so in this scenario, he's going to have a just slight tendency to be less concerned with feelings and more focused on logic and reasoning. Um, so still, though, if I was to persuade him, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go to Josh and be like, dude, here's the deal. Everybody feels sad. Right. That's not going to be the way I, I, I would have to appeal to. Dude, if we do it this way, it's not going to function correctly because A plus B isn't equaling C, you know. So like I could mention like, hey, they're going to feel sad. But the reason that's a problem is they're going to be depressed and they're not going to work and get the output that we want to have or something like that. So I've got to like relate it back to logic and reasoning versus just everyone doesn't feel a certain way happy or sad or whatever yeah just, and it I'm says that simple emotion, it says but. that in the and how to work best with josh it says provide data-driven insights which yeah. that wasn't like data-driven what you were saying on yeah the contrary there yeah. but it is reason reasoning and it feels like you know it would something that hard numbers could well, like on yours you're an entp in a pretty high t high t so i have noticed in your interactions with groups or whatever you're willing to say the thing that <laughs> needs to be said even though there's going to be hurt feeling yeah yeah and and it's cool and, and isn't it? because yeah <laughs> <laughs> where somebody that's on the high f side would be like i can't really say that because yeah. it's going to hurt jane's feelings yeah. or bobby's going yeah. to be really crushed by yeah. this yeah but that willingness to say hey this has got to change uh i think that that serves mm. uh in, in a leadership role very well. I think, but where, where someone who's collaborative has to go, okay, I can, I can sense both of these things happening at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think one thing that I was a little confused about when I first took it, I was like, I didn't understand letters, but being like, I'm not a T, but a T over an F is not saying that the person is inconsiderate about somebody's feelings. They just, the way they process and like, you know, give back or feedback or like information is like very like, to the nail, like that's what it is. Yeah. Like that's the information. Like how else could it be anything else? You know, it's like it's a flower. This is a flower, but like somebody who's an F is like, it's got colors and it's like pretty and it's like it's different. But somebody who's in T is not going to be inconsiderate. They're like, yeah, it's pretty. 
Yeah. It's got colors. No sugar coating. Yeah, there's no <laughs> sugar coating, but they're not inconsiderate. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, none of these are worse or better than the other. They're just variations on how we are as people. Uh, except for these two guys who don't have much variation. They're, oh they're, both, <laughs> <laughs> they're both uh, ENFP. Is that in the um, hospital? <laughs> it sure is. Uh, is. Funny. <laughs> so uh, this was interesting. I, I actually, I don't know that I've thought about this very much of how Tyler and Jay would both be the same thing. So let's go through it. So there, you guys are the enthusiast. Your strengths are you're creative, adaptable, and skilled at generating ideas and engaging with others. Your weaknesses may struggle with time management and follow through. Your communication style is energetic, expressive, and focused on possibilities. And the best way to work with Jay and Tyler is provide variety, be open to new ideas, and offer support with organization and structure. Yes. Yeah? Agreed. Okay. Well, let, let's go in. Let's start with Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Santa. What do you mean? That's not Tyler. That's not Tyler. That's not Tyler. That's not Tyler. <laughs> Tyler dressed up as Santa for our guys. Christmas uh, Christmas party. It was truly magical. It was. It made me. It made me tear up. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. It was truly amazing. <laughs> um, all right. So let's look at Tyler's scores. So you're twelve percent extrovert, forty four percent intuitive, nineteen percent feeling, and nine percent perceiving. So uh, your highest thing is intuitive. And and one thing I learn uh tyler is you'll say so much in a conversation this will this type of phrasing will come up man i just i just as i man i'm just feeling like we probably need to blah 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 you know and and i'm using the word feel so don't get that confused with feeling right you're you're saying i don't have necessarily concrete data to say this but i think we need to work on this thing or this relationship between these two people or instinctive kind of, yeah, you have an instinct. And you so you mentioned that a lot. Like you'll just be like, man, I, man, I, I don't know. I'm really feeling like blah. On mechanical things. I really feel like this is going to have to be curved. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll draw it and you'll work it through. But <laughs> at some point you're just like, no, no, here's the, here's the deal. I'm, I just, I don't know. I just need to do it this way. I think it's yeah. going to work right. And I, I am a thinking person. I'm also intuition. So then my thinking stuff kind of jumps in at times and I'll be like, well, hang on, yep. but is it four things or seven things, you know, whatever. So I'll try to start pushing logic into the intuition thing. And then, you know, I've had to learn how to, when, when is it good for me to jump in and like, cause sometimes it's right. And it'll be like, Oh yeah, we do need seven instead of two, whatever. And then other times it's like, why did I even say anything? Just leave him alone. And he's, he's already, he's, his intuition is correct. On but this. I value that other perspective because the intuitive thing is not always right. I've had to learn that. It's like when somebody has to, wants to do the an analysis, mm. it's, it's good. It's a good thing yeah. to know. Yeah. It, um, the, the, in, the, e, the I and the E, I've taken this before when I was almost on the line where, uh, and I've noticed this where I like to be around people but I'm not like Bono where I have to be in front of the yeah, audience the whole right. time. It's like uh, I can do that, but then there's times when I, I have to draw back from that because, man, it's just, you know, too, too much. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. So um, what do you guys think? Uh, let's focus on Tyler for a second. When you read these things, do, how does this sound compared to what your experience is like with Tyler? Uh, I would say, <clears throat> and this is going to sound like a dig, but it's not, I promise. Uh, may struggle with time management because I'm the same. Uh, Tyler is uh, not the most proficient at getting something done, but you're damn sure well going to get the best out of what he's trying to do. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it's yeah. like, hey, yeah, I think it should take me three days. And it's like a week and a half later. And you're like, well, it's done now. That wasn't three days, but... It, but now we, it's perfectly it's done. It's perfect. Or yeah. it's like, take the the painting, for example. We've been repainting our studio, and it's been really, it's really It's a different annoying. debrief. There's a lot I mean, of does variation. There's doesn't a lot help. of yeah. things that happen. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but but it's true because like a lot of the times, I'll I'll go in there and uh, like either, either to offer help or, or something, and Tyler's just like staring. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know how to how to offer help and then it's like i uh, then and then 30 minutes later he basically explains to me everything he was staring and thinking about and then he goes and he gets it done so yeah it's either like you go in there and you're like i think that looks good 
but he's been staring at it and he knows everything that's with it. And he's like, nope, still not it. And he like figures out, he takes time, does research and figures it out. So, I mean, it takes time, but the results are. Amazing. That's where the support with structure and uh, what, what's the other thing? Was it say structure and organization? Organization. Uh-huh. So I value that highly uh-huh. where, where someone will say, look, we have to have this in two hours. Then I can totally adapt and right. go, oh, right. yeah. yeah. but then if I've got time, I'm like, well, what if I tried it this way? You know, so that's organization and structure. I think, Andre, I've, uh, that's one thing that you have always brought up, valued being, you will say, I'll think, oh, I should do this first and this first. And then you go, well, actually, the best thing to do would be this, this, and this. And I'm like, oh, of course, that makes total sense. And and that's that's sequence. very helpful. Dude, yeah. an- another one on you is communication <clears throat> style. Um, you are, so it says energetic, expressive, and focused on possibilities. That focus on possibilities one hits home big time for you because a lot of the times you're like, guys, guys, imagine if the water <laughs> cup could fill itself and the coffee flies across the room into your hand. Great and idea. you're like, oh, yeah, that would be super cool. We yeah. have been having a lot of like internal conversations about like different things lately. And definitely Tyler's always coming through with the sort of like, yeah, yeah, but like how the dope idea be? should be yeah. that they can <laughs> sit down and we go, so you want to be on the moon? Boop, they're on the moon, you know? Like, like, how do we figure that, you know? It's easy to say. Right, right. Well, but I think it's important to, like, have that spirit uh, somewhere of pushing us to go, okay, well, hey, we have to, we have to think about the uh, possibilities because if we're not thinking just possibilities, it's only ever going to be the, the six things we already do, and it's never going to be, well, it turns out we could have made the coffee cup fly across the room if we had <laughs> thought about it. It turns out somebody made the jet pack, you know, whatever. Yeah, Ty- Tyler frequently says, you know what would be cool? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, I think it would be awesome. It'd be if. awesome if you <laughs> yeah. know, if it would just do blah blah blah. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's move to Jay. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. Uh, just, the, just the picture changes. Oh, though, right? sweet. Just the picture changes and the scores change. <laughs> so, uh, so there's Tyler's scores. Here's Jay's scores. So, kind of switching between those. So you can see, pretty close. Uh, they're pretty close. You're higher on the extrovert side. Surprise. Jay. Um, <laughs> I think that resonates with all of oh, us. Oh yeah. yeah. Oops. Uh, and then uh, higher on the intuition side. Um, and then the others are, are fairly close. So your highest is uh, extrovert, uh, which Shocker. I think we all agree makes mm-hmm. complete sense to us. We joke about how every time somebody comes in the studio, Jay's like, yeah, so I, like, I know your cousin because we went to high school together yeah. and we worked at Cinnabon in the mall, you <laughs> know, or it's like, what, how do you, what are you talking about? Which is oh, funny. I've got a buddy that does that. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You oh, guys, yeah, have you seen this picture of my friend? Like, he does really cool stuff. I'm like, that's a really famous You guys person. say, you guys say that, you, Andre, you've made the joke multiple times of, well, just ask Jay because he like probably went to high school with him or whatever. <laughs> well, turns out I went to high school with Josh's girlfriend. Ah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Quite literally. Of course you did. That, that yeah, is, yeah. That is 100% true. That's, yeah, we literally so graduated funny. together. That's so, so you weren't funny. here when we made that discovery. That's I was like, hilarious. gosh, he literally says that all the time. <laughs> um, so, Jay, what? so now let's focus on you a little bit. So uh, on your strengths, do you feel like these strengths capture part of who you are and what, react to this strengths, weaknesses, all of it, communication style, how to best work with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think so. Uh, the, the, uh, it's funny because a skill that generating ideas and engaging with others, I think the engaging with others is huge. Mm. Um, I love to collaborate. It's one of my favorite things to do. And so working here, that just comes like extremely naturally because everybody's always thinking about different ideas. So I'm, I kind of fall back on the generating the ideas, hmm. but I love engaging with you guys. Um, my weaknesses are, uh, spot on uh 100 percent uh because uh you know i can i'm a fly i can get distracted really easy and i can do i like to do 10 things at once and move in between them um let's see it's interesting though jay because you've accomplished a lot of things like the documentary thing that you've made and then the the other like things that you've been been involved in i i I kind of am amazed a lot of times that a lot of the things that you've actually done so i i guess maybe you've figured out how to push through with things and get things done, maybe maybe that's something you've been what, able to adapt through. Yeah, interesting. When we moved over to Notion, Jay and I were talking about it. This is what we're using to track all our stuff. And you were like, dude, this is great. Because now I have this structure. So I think you were reacting when I read this of and offer support with organization and structure. I think 
part of what you were feeling in that is like, finally, I've got some nice structure and some support. You know, I've got a, I've got a system now that can kind of help me keep track of this from start to finish. Is that accurate? Yeah, so- for sure. And that, that what that actually makes me think of is like, I really wish I could go back 10 years and take it again hmm. to yeah. compare hmm. myself because that's been, and that's been a lot of growth for me is like figuring out how to, how to like accept that. Cause I used to reject that. Cause like, cause before this, my jobs were raft guides and soccer coach. You know what I mean? There right. was no like, right. there was no real way to to kind of. I mean, I did other things at another job, but right. uh, there was no like real way for me to like conform to a structure as much. Uh, and so, as it's been put in front of me now, with like the growth that I've experienced of just like living life and and working with different people and taking all those experiences and reflecting on it, I definitely. I definitely see that I, I'm definitely more accepting of, oh, hey, that structure could uh, help me. And so why don't I dive in on it and, and figure it out? That's why now I have my own notion. So I have a notion. I yeah, do notion for work, but I also use it for like my life. Yeah. Basically too, so. OK. Yeah. Because you found having that organization support. Well, it's like I have I have ninety thousand ideas up here, mm. and mm. Uh, and and uh, and this is gonna uh, be funny for you and I, but a previous boss told me that if I never write anything down, <laughs> then nice. I won't remember it. Nice. Yeah. Um, so shout yeah. out to him. Yeah. Um, hey, because great. now when when things pop in my head, I have like, and I'm never gonna write them down because come on pen and paper i'm not tyler okay (laughs) um (laughs) so i get on my phone and like whether i drop links or i write ideas or uh i I have like three or four places to do that so strengths skilled at generating ideas that's one of the things also Uh, side note jay how old is rigby in this photo he looks tiny i don't know this isn't no this was when uh this is with p-lock yeah yeah i was was cropped in Okay, because I was like that. Was it with P-Lock or was it with the Australian P-Lock? No, it was with P-Lock. Okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> There's so, you sounded uh, so disappointed when you <laughs> said that. Interesting way to um, say that skilled. At ge- you don't think of generating ideas as, I don't, as, as a skill. Um, but that's really, I guess, a, a strength. If you do strengths finder. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. That, it's like, oh, okay. Hey, here's the thing I've learned. Um, the things that we feel like aren't really that big of a deal. We just do it. Yeah, we just, do we that just create ideas. That those are always massive hints to who we are as a person. And so, like for you to say, like, yeah, generating ideas, that just comes so naturally to me. Well, to other personality types, it's like, how could someone even think of this? You know? And so sometimes the and, and what's funny that I've learned is the things that we're each uniquely gifted at, we will tend to discount as being like second tier skills, because it's like, gosh. I don't know how they do that. I could never generate ideas, you know, uh, or we'll sit there and think, oh yeah, all I do is generate ideas. I'm just like an idea person. I yeah. come up with ideas. It's not, I don't really do the cool stuff. There's no value in that. Yeah. At all. I'm just saying, so, saying so just it, realize those things that you do naturally that seem like not a big deal are typically your superpower. Wow. So dude, um, I'm, I'm really interested in my communication style too. Cause that's something I've been trying to like think about, but the energetic and expressive is very, very on point and focusing on possibilities is also something I'm always shooting for the moon with. Like, I guess like whenever I meet somebody, uh, my dad always told me like, I never meet a stranger. Like I'm always making friends. Yeah. So I think I think of the possibility of like what a relationship with somebody could be like as I'm even if it's a random person or somebody that I already know, like what, when I'm communicating, I will say I had a friend recently tell me, dude, in every video and every debrief, uh, you're wearing Billy strings merch. And today I wasn't, but Holy crap, you chose a photo and there's <laughs> strings <laughs> right there. That's, funny. That's <laughs> so, hilarious. That was funny. But yeah. Well, the, the, the E on the far left yeah. doesn't surprise me yeah. or any of you guys. In, yeah. In any way, yeah. So. I don't know. Let's look at this guy. Whoa. Hey. Harmonizer. Growing marijuana. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So I, we were in this store. The sealed carry. We were in this store, and I'm like, I just found the most hilarious collection of books, like all right next to each other. With retirement, social security, growing marijuana, and concealed carry oh, guns. Man. Like, what so a that weird. Going how's that going? Yeah, I've been learning a lot. Um, all right. Okay. So Isaac's the harmonizer. His strengths include that he's empathetic, diplomatic, and skilled at bringing out the best in others. His weaknesses may avoid avoid conflict and take on too much responsibility. His communication style is warm, supportive, and focused on emotional connection and how to work best with Isaac, acknowledge his efforts, provide clear expectations, and be open to his ideas for fostering team harmony. Hmm. 
So Isaac gets a, a 38% in both uh, extrovertness and feeling. He um, gets a 9% on intuitive and 1% on judging. So he's just barely a J um, on that. You, you have, there is no zero, right? So you're yeah. either, you have to be one or the other on these. You cannot be dead middle. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, react to that. Well, I think one thing that's interesting to me, I've felt this every time I've ever taken a personality test. Is it sounds like something an ENFJ would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, is I always feel like it sort of depends on what's happening. Because I think what will happen is like if I, when I get into a, I will get more zeroed in on certain things the higher my stress level of an anxious level gets. So like I've noticed about myself if it's like, you know, I had a situation the other day where I had like a stressful moment at a side gig I do. And I'm like, I am not being like thinking about anybody's anything except my, I'm being so self-centered and entirely focused on my thing and shutting down other people. Cause I'm like, what? No, I can't solve this problem that I'm being asked to solve. And I'm really freaking out about that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit like our uh, Jay, yeah. you and I's conversation on the bit focus thing a couple debriefs ago. Um, and so I find, I think partly because I'm young, I don't have this like solid rockness in those uh, zones. So like, you know, some of the questions will be stuff like, like I'm a very extroverted person, but then it's like, I do find a like self-centered egoness of like, if I'm not the coolest extroverted person in the room, <laughs> then I feel way less inclined to be extroverted. Like if I'm not like, yeah. if I, you know, you'll if, start if, stepping back. Right. If you send me to a golf conference uh -huh. where it's just people talking about golf, I'm not going to be like, happy all around the room talking to people the mm. whole time because i'm like i don't know anything about That's this Jay's i have nothing to share right <laughs> jay would be killing Jay's it like right but it's like you know I, I think for me that's an interesting like i'm an extrovert when I have a, like, I want to be, but it's like, if I find myself in a situation where it's like, I'm not a part of this thing, then I feel like way less inclined to want to get out there and be like, whatever. Um, I, I will say yeah. I have a unique, uh, <laughs> a unique vantage point yes, with you, Isaac. You sure do. Um, <laughs> Isaac is my son, in case you don't know that. <laughs> um, and so what I have watched always is Isaac has always been that second word diplomatic. He's always thinking about like, like the amount of times he said to me like, yeah, but you got to realize they're feeling this or yep. thinking this yep. or, hey, uh, mom's mad at you because of this and you should probably do this idea. <laughs> you know, like he's always kind of to go buy her the cheese that she wants <laughs> yeah, from the whatever. one store or whatever. Right. You yeah. Know. yeah, yeah. And so um, so I think I, you've always been quick to notice, uh, hey, I think they're really feeling blank, you know, and uh, expressing that to his thinker dad um, yeah because i'm more illiterate on that <laughs> the strengths i see the diplomatic for sure but uh skilled at bringing out the best in others is a great way to nail it down uh how many times a day do we all go hey isaac yeah um and like he's like all right hold on one second and he comes over and you're like okay what can i do to make sure that you're able to do the thing yeah. um you're really good at that um the thing i noticed the most though is you're also you are extremely empathetic too and i think that goes with what he was saying plus the diplomatic because you do you you are you are um the opposite of devil's advocate like when i'm over here and i'm like fs i hate that oh. this client's asking for this thing that's and so annoying isaac's like well remember blah 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 blah, <laughs> blah and this is why they do it and i'm like shut up but you're also right <laughs> you know that's i think funny. one thing this doesn't cover is something we've talked about internally a few times is i have this tendency to be very focused on like like i kind of mentioned this out earlier but like i get focused on solving a problem and i'll start coming across as super negative because of it um because i'll be like okay yeah well crap but this is gonna happen how are we oh no that's a bad problem it's like yeah but everything else was cool i'm like i know i'm so excited about it you know is what i'm thinking i'm like but i want to make it from 90 percent to 100 and it's like we just got to solve the 10 percent. but it's like i haven't vocalized that i'm happy about the 90 percent that already got done right so it's like you know when we're talking about paint it's easy for me to look at it uh, and I, i'm trying to you know be conscious of this and look at it and go oh my gosh it all looks amazing except that corner we just got to <laughs> repaint it and it'll be perfect right but that could easily come out as yeah we got to repaint the corner i think you know it doesn't look perfect, you know, yeah. but what, what, I've skipped the part where I think it looks amazing everywhere else. You well, know? you do That's, in your communication style, warm, supportive and focus on emotional connection. I do think even when you are saying 
something is wrong, yeah. you are following that up with immediately saying, and I'm not trying to say this, <laughs> yeah. um, but so you're always trying to explain so that you can, uh, you don't, you don't want to seem not supportive because you totally are. I think that's the difference between uh, you and, and Andre is that Andre, I've experienced this before, and, it's, and I've had to, I've learned that this is a good thing. But when you come in and, and look at the wall and go, hmm, yes, that one little place right there, it's still not. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's incredibly valuable. And I know you, you, you later are always clear to say, hey, I'm not criticizing at all. It's just that, but you instantly are, are willing to say that. But there's yeah. the difference in the F and the P. Yeah. And the, what is it, F and the T part. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it's interesting, too, because I think, like, you're not all that far off from Jay and I on the E and F J scale. So just a little tip to the other side and you would have been in the EF ENFP category. Uh -huh. it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah, been a, true. it's been a little bit. What, what is the J and the P thing? Cause it, it's been a bit since we looked at yeah, it. What are we judging talking about again? And perceiving. Mm -hmm. So judging is more like, well, this is definitely right. And this is definitely wrong. And perceiving is more like, well, I mean, there's a lot of gray here. I, I think for me, where that comes down to is it depends on what I know, which sounds yeah. super, you know, but it's like, yeah, if, if somebody, com if somebody comes up, to, <laughs> right, if somebody comes up to me and is like, hey, so my computer won't print. Oh, well, you have to do this. Oh, oh, wait, why is my color grade not working? Oh, it's because you're on uh, proxy instead of HQ. But if somebody comes up to me and is like, hey, man, like how are we going to fix this other problem? Like, I don't really know about that. What's their perspective and your perspective on the thing. I kind of see both sides of this. Art. So it's like, I kind of feel like when it comes to interpersonal stuff, I'm very perceiving, but when it comes to very like factual stuff, mm. like I get very frustrated and Andre, like, like I know this happens to you a ton. Like I had a situation where I had a thing happen on my college campus where I parked in a parking spot. I wasn't supposed to, but I had a thing. I just didn't have it up at the time and whatever. I'm like, Hey, uh, can I resolve this problem? You know, like I understand I broke the rule in that moment. I had a reason I wasn't breaking the rule. I just didn't have the thing ready for it. I have it with me now. I have the proof of this thing being true. And they go, yeah, we never, uh, we can't, can't do anything about it. There's nobody you can talk to. <laughs> like there's no one. You were the front desk person. You're not the man. Like, like, and that's my care. And can I speak to your manager? But it's like, it's not out of a sense of like, I'm like, there can't be true. There's no one to talk to. There has to be somebody somewhere. There can't just be a blanket. Nope. And it's, and, and that's a thing that I do to other people when I feel like, well, I have the answer. I already know. And that's what that person was doing to me in that moment. It's like, well, no, I know they're, they're I mean, yes, there is technically someone you can talk to. They're going to tell you the same answer I just told you. So it's not worth either of our time. Yeah. And so I think trying to, that's, I think where I balance on that thing, I guess that feels, yeah. that felt like a roundabout sentence that didn't have a conclusion, but. I understood it. <laughs> I love it. Let's. I, um, you also had some deep yes. cuts on some DaVinci Resolve users there. I know. <laughs> That's good. All right, let's uh, let's jump to this lady. Uh, oh. <laughs> yes. Oh. No. You're welcome. Hey, my my hat and my hair made it into the. Video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, Cami, you're an ISFP, the gentle creator. Your strengths are compassionate, adaptable, and skilled at creating harmonious environments. Your weaknesses may avoid conflict and struggle with asserting yourself. Your communication style is gentle, supportive, and focused on personal values. And the best way to work with Cami is provide a supportive environment, offer clear guidance, and acknowledge her unique contributions. And so then down below, we can see your scores. Your highest score is feeling at 31%. So you're the most uh, of all of those traits. You're the most uh, feeling of those is the highest one and then sensing and introvert are both at 22 percent and perceivings at 16 percent so yeah what do you what do you think about this little set of words and you're welcome uh, for the picture thanks i really <laughs> appreciate it um something i'm going to go off of what isaac said before is with all personality tests i feel like it changes because i'm still very young and my personality changes and whenever i take the test it depends on what mood i'm in because that's going to yeah, it sounds like something an ISFP would say. Too. Hey, um, I feel like can I we? just I can never like look at something and read something and be like, yeah, that's me, you know. All right, so well, I'm like, all right, well, I got you, one. You get, you get. Uh, wait, then let's let's all react to it. Then, yeah, Jay, react to this. I got one. The the one that stands out the most to me on your strengths is your adaptability. Um, Cause like when you first started working here, how many times were you like, uh, what am I doing today? And we're like, oh, okay. We have to like figure that out. But there's been so many times where we need so many different things and you've jumped in and you've 
uh, taken it head on and done a really good job immediately. And so I think for that, I think your adaptability is I think that's strong. something that I, I really value in myself when I push myself to do is to, like, my biggest thing is that I want to be able to do everything. And I want to be able to do everything well. So that in the case that it's like, hey, can you come paint this wall? I'm like, yeah, I can paint that wall. And then it's like, hey, can you come make Ethernet cables? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> make those. You know, it's like I want to throw myself into the deep end and learn it so I can do it. And then anytime somebody's like, I need help, I'll be like, I got you. You know, like that's what I want to be. So I do feel that. On the how to best work with Cami, I've noticed, Cami, when there have been times when you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be working on. And that really stresses you out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where in times when I'm not sure what to work on, I've got a thousand different things that I could lay. Like, well, if I don't know what I'm going to work on, I'm going to work on that thing. Um, cause I've got right. 12 different projects already going, yeah. you know? So, uh, cause, and I would hear, you know, I, when I hear somebody being really frustrated about not having clear guidance, sometimes it's like, well, just pick a thing and work on it, you know? But I think maybe that's harder for other people to, and, and I've struggled right. with that yeah. too, cause yeah. I want to make sure I'm doing something that's meaningful, but yeah. I'll pick something, right. you know? And I'm not saying, Cammy, that's not a criticism. I'm just saying, it's like, oh, I've noticed how stressing no, that is I've, to I've not know. That. Right. I mean, Cammie said multiple times, like, I don't understand how everybody knows what to do right now. Yeah. You know, and, and so what I've heard you say out of that is, hey, I need clear guidance. I don't have I need very direct, clear understanding yeah. of what I need to do. And then I'm going to go kill it because yeah. as soon as we do give you something and you fully understand it, then you just go somehow move a 400 pound <laughs> desk by yourself and whatever. And so uh, so you, you make it happen once you have clear understanding of what it is yeah. um, and where your boundaries are. Um, and I've also watched that happen where you feel like, well, I'm going to go all the way and make all the decisions. And then somebody steps in with like other opinions. And then that also kind of deflates you. And I think part, cause it's like, well, dang it. I thought I had clear guidance. I thought I had the structure of understanding of this is what I'm supposed yeah. to do. And now, uh, uh, an interrupt happened. And now this person's trying to insert themselves in this situation. And now my guidance isn't clear. Yeah. Anymore. I think the way that I when I approach something to do something, if it's like, hey, go label the spices. And it's like, okay. Uh, I know that seems very like, yeah, anybody can do that. But then I'm over here being like, how does a label maker work? And what would I name it? Okay, what is the spice? Okay, I think that's what that spice is, but I'm gonna label, I don't know, where do I stick it? Like, And in the middle of this, uh, dad comes in and he's like, hey, uh, so actually I wanted it, what if it were instead just cutouts of individual letters instead of being like a one big sticker label? And you're like, yeah. I made 40 sticker labels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, if it's something that I don't know how to do, I struggle a lot if somebody's like go do this i'm like i uh, i don't even know how to start doing that like i don't ugh. uh so then i'm like i'll i'll go I'll be like yeah sure i can do that because i'm like i want to be able to do anything and then i like start it i'm like uh i don't know what to do so <laughs> then i go back and i'm like hey can you uh <laughs> can you tell me to do exactly what you were saying how to do because i don't know that's so. that's interesting you you're also very good at picking up on like, like you've asked me probably the most of anyone that works here. Hey, are you okay? <laughs> which, yeah. which there's, it's, that's a complicated answer to answer. Yes. To. <laughs> there's lots of problems there, but, uh, but you know, like I, I'm noticing you're, you're kind of constantly, um, empathing, you know, you're constantly kind of feeling, yeah. so I can see that F in you, um, where you're kind of like, huh, I think, I think they're upset or frustrated or tense or nervous or whatever. It seems like you pick up on that really quick. Mm -hmm. One other, one other strength I'll notice too is like, uh, Cam, you're fun to work with. So skilled at creating harmonious environments. Like one example I'll use is we were all in the mayor's office shooting a plate and Cammy came up with us as a dream team and she named us Jamazic. <laughs> Jamazic. <laughs> and uh, I think I think the working with people who aren't fun uh, can be difficult. Yeah. So you, you do bring a, a joyfulness to uh, like hanging out and working on stuff. So you definitely are skilled at like taking what could be like this is work and turning it into like I'm having fun at work. Yeah, because if it's something that I'm like oh, great, another day at work, I don't want to be here, what am I going to do, I don't know. And it's like, well, I don't want to have that mentality because then I'm going to have that mentality about every day. So it's like, how can I make this day good and it fun and, like, goofy and, like... How can you make this day get better oh, no. and, and better? 
<laughs> well, and even this picture that I took of you, I was going through my Apple photos and you know finding one. And uh, this is in a series of photos we were taking with Ann Byler. And in one picture, you stick your tongue out like no one else yeah. is doing anything. And then the rest of them, you're totally just smiling normal. But I was like, that's kind of I think that's an indicator of like, hey, there's just a little little splash of so personality. Off fun. of what I just said about like, I don't want to be here. I was having a really tough day that day for some reason. I don't know what it was. I just remember being like, today sucks. I'm just not having, I don't, it's not here. Like, I'm not here. And then when everyone was like, oh, let's just take a group photo. And I'm like, I don't want to be in this group photo. I feel like I look like trash and I feel like trash and I don't want to be here. I'm going to leave. The day is done. And then I'm like, you know what? No. I mean, it's a photo. Let's have fun with it. And so I'm over here like, the entire time. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> somebody's like, oh, let's do a goofy one. And nobody really did. And then I'm over here like, sure. <laughs> like, I'll do that. Like, let's do it. Um, I, I think kind of related to that this is, it, it is also I noticed that you definitely do like you will absorb the vibe of everyone else too so it's like if it starts going like if somebody's frustrated and you are related to their task you will feel the same level of mm, frustration yeah. as yeah. them it's yeah. kind of like and and a lot of that I think is out of you kind of supporting that person be like you're right that sucks right but I think sometimes it ends up becoming this thing of like it, it spirals down into kind of a like, oh man, that's that's now a machine that's feeding itself every yeah. once in a while. And it's not like, that's not me saying, how dare you, right? Like, it, it, you know, that's that, it's a thing that has happened. It's there not like- it goes with his F. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, yeah, see, that's what I did. Um, we talked about it earlier. What he's saying is you're totally What broke. I'm saying is I hate you, Cam. Hey. Um, I mean, I get it, I get no, it. I mean, but, but you're, so empath, I think would be a great word to mm -hmm. use there. So you, you take on the emotions of whatever the people around you are exhibiting yeah, it's and, a very, and heighten them. It's a very big thing. It's like, there's an example, I can't remember where I heard this from, but it was like, be like a thermostat and not a thermometer. And that's being like, hey, let's brighten the room. And like, you know, mm. the mood is down. You want to bring it cool. up, you know? I'm stealing that. That's um, a good one. That's a good one. And Never then it's that. like, I'm usually the thermometer though. Cause then it's um, like, I walk in and like, yeah, I can be a thermostat sometimes. I try to be like in a work environment. I try to like bring everything up or like, you know, but I'm usually a th like a thermometer and it's like, yeah. new personality I, test. Man. I, I like, I feel the vibes. I'm like, something's bad in here and I don't, I'm going to be quiet. Like <laughs> so now I'm going to say in the future, Hey, are you being a thermometer right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, Everybody's just going to be like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Something oh, man. as I'm looking at this now that I'm realizing is that my weaknesses may avoid conflict and struggle with asserting myself. That's a big thing here for me. And that's a big thing everywhere. Like if it's somewhere that I'm comfortable and like, I know I can assort, assert myself cause I know what I'm doing. Then it's like, yeah, I'll like assert myself. But if it's like here where it's like, you guys are having a conversation about something that I have no idea what it is. And I'm just gonna be like, oh, just be quiet. I don't know. Just tell me what to do. But um, the may avoid conflict part is very prominent. And mm. I know that for a fact. Mm. I hate conflict. Mm. I hate conflict so much because it makes, it gives me anxiety. It makes me want to cry. Like I can't with conflict. I'm like, whew. But um, something that I'm trying to learn is that um, somebody told me, it's like, if there's a conversation you don't want to have, most likely the conversation you need to have um and that's a big thing for me that i'm trying to work on but yeah, awesome. avoid conflict as a yes <laughs> here's this guy dude this Whoa. is this is the one i've been waiting on <laughs> <laughs> morgan is an nice. infj the visionary empath his strengths are creative insightful and deeply attuned to the needs of others his weaknesses may struggle with decision making and asserting boundaries. His communication style is thoughtful, empathetic, and focused on deeper meanings. The best way to work with Morgan is provide space for reflection, value his insights, and be clear and direct in your communication. Now, what's interesting about Morgan is three of his four scores are 6%. Yeah. Um, so, and then judging is, is high. <laughs> um, react to this everybody what do you guys think when you see that i know that this is the most rare combination i think mm. i have only one person my friend she's an infj and the amount of times i've heard this is like the rarest personality type you could ever have i'm like oh okay but then i actually did research on it i'm like that is really strange it is that's really rare for somebody to be like this so i think it's cool the creative part is what's awesome it's funny because um, like I'm creative and I can make stupid things out of paper and wood and 
and but Morgan makes creative things out of wires and machines and software, mm -hmm. and just blows us all away with yeah. like how what no how, how did you do that? Um, so I love the uh, the creative. He's still a creative, but with a whole different set of tools and materials. Mm. Yeah. Um, yep. Deeply attuned to the needs of others too. Um, like uh, if I say, or if like all of us come together and we're like, man, if we only had the one page where like everything was there, it's like uh, the next day Morgan's like, oh yeah, by the way, I created the social you dashboard. I literally have it right here and it has everything you need on it. Yeah. And so it's, it's like he hears things that, that could, we could need to be a little bit less complicated for us to figure things out. And he tries to make it easy for us, which is awesome. I feel like with the weaknesses, the decision making, I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't really see that in him because I feel like if yeah. he's given creative direction, he always just makes it happen and figures out a way to make it happen. So I guess that's like one thing I kind of disagree with yeah. Morgan is his weaknesses. I don't feel like he's bad at making decisions. This may be a good time to talk about how you can adapt to your weaknesses and you, you create sure. adaptive strategies yeah. for yeah. dealing with your weaknesses. Because yeah. like, uh, you know, Morgan, when we were in the meeting the other day and you were talking about boundaries versus, uh, I can't remember exactly what boundaries it was. Boundaries versus saying no. Yeah, yeah. So obviously this is something that you've thought about a lot about mm. how to set boundaries. Mm. So when we all look at our weaknesses and go, okay, I'm going to have to That's create some kind of strategy to deal with this. Yeah. So like, so it sounds like he's, you, maybe you've done that, um, Morgan, yeah. to some extent, or what, maybe yeah. put a lot of energy into that. React to that, Morgan, the weaknesses part. Again, yeah. this is just from Claude. Like I just stuck everything <laughs> in and hit enter and this is what it, Stupid and then I just Claude. styled it. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, um, when I'm looking at the weaknesses, Emma, when I think about the struggle with decision making, I think it's because I take in a lot of insight from everybody else, and I want to make sure that the decision that's being made, you know, mm. is helpful for everybody. Because you're deeply attuned to the needs of others, <laughs> right? And so a lot of it is that. So I think that's where I get hung up on decision making from time to time. Um, but I am very much once a decision is made, sticking with that decision, yeah, and going it all the way, you know, following it all the way through, yeah. I would say on that. I've noticed back to what Tyler was saying about, um, I've noticed that like, I'll sometimes just mention something cause I'm an idea guy and then I'll come in two days later and it's finished or Jay, <laughs> what you were saying about like, then suddenly there's a dashboard yep. and that's mostly magic. And it's like, well, I don't, what, what do you mean? It's already in place and happening, you know? And, uh, but I also have realized like, Oh, I have to be careful to distinguish between this is a random thought and idea that may or may not have any value or merit versus this is a thought that I really want us to execute on because Morgan's going to be so listening for my needs that you'll just take it and execute on it, which is amazing. But I have to be careful about making sure I've, you know, I'm, I'm presenting a good idea because you're going to make it happen. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of that is like, okay, I'm going to make that happen. And then when it's not the, direction we were going then i can get really frustrated yeah well i just i, I executed the thing and i did it and right figured out all these problems but it and, wasn't the right thing and so i feel mm. like it was a waste even though i learned a lot through the process sure but it was still like oh man i should have just yeah not when, put energy towards that yeah, yeah. yeah when yeah. decisions are made and then those decisions are changed, changed. Mm -hmm. It really frustrates you, yeah. um, which makes sense. But I think another thing that'll happen too is, Dad, you have a lot of things in your brain. And uh, the other day we were talking about we're about to do a big live event uh, with breakout sessions. And uh, I was like, hey, we tried looking into this one way to do it. And that way is not going to work. What I didn't say to you in that moment, because this has just happened. It's one of those situations. We were on a phone call about something else. So it wasn't like a meeting that was like about this thing. But I ended up mentioning that we tried this thing and it didn't work. And you started brainstorming a solution to it. You were like, oh, well, what we could do is run this, this, this and this. And then like what you didn't know is that Morgan had made a solution to it in the past and you just hadn't remembered that that solution right. existed. Right. But like Morgan and I are like, I guess we'll start putting this thing together or even, but Morgan's like, but we have like an idea. And I'm like, you know what, now that you're saying this, he, he may not just, he may just not remember that we had that idea forever ago. So I mentioned it to you and you're like, oh yeah, that's a like way better idea. Let's do that. That's so yeah. much easier. I also enjoy having a lot of clarity and direction yeah. on tasks and like ideas and that doesn't always happen here and so that can 
be a challenge to work through, but I'm usually working ahead just like recently, mm -hmm. um, talking with like the unreal artists right. for the event that we have coming up, just getting ahead of that so that I can have resources to kind of manage that. Um, I'm also highly susceptible, if that's the word, I don't know how to say yep. that word. Susceptible. But yeah, to like burnout, to experiencing yep. that because I just, I apply because your brain's running everything nice to it, effort. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I want it to be good. I want it to work and I want it to be great. Yeah. Yep. So. And your communication style uh, focused on deeper meanings is uh, definitely hits mm -hmm. because you're the first uh, and some people may look at this as something that's annoying or negative, but you're the first person to push back on something and like where everybody, everybody may fall into like a certain line and like just do it. You're the first person to say like, why? Or uh, can I rebuke what you just said? Or whatever and i think that's like absolutely necessary to have at least one person like that yeah, in yeah. your team absolutely. so that you can Central. dive deeper and yeah. actually figure out and not just be surface level so yeah i feel like morgan is not scared of conflict if he disagrees with uh something he's gonna say it and like jay was saying i feel like that's important to have someone on the team who yes. can kind of step up and rebuttal yeah. whatever yeah. someone's absolutely. saying um to kind of think differently and uh, look at a situation differently. And then also wear a top hat with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That is. laughs> uh, what I would say here is the visionary empath. It's this combination of being, uh, seeing how all of this plays together. You're able to see the future <clears throat> and all the parts involved in that. And, uh, and the empath part of that is you're able to think through the feeling. You're able to express feelings attached to it. Uh, instead of just uh, the the practical parts of it, you can express the feeling side. So it's Counselor Troy yeah. on yeah. Like oh, that's so good. So it's super super valuable. All right, so we've got, yeah. hey, oh, real yeah, quick, yeah. one thing that I've noticed in the past or um, that I think about is like I often say I'm dealing with the present and you deal with the future. Yeah, and so like, but, but I can also see the future with uh -huh, you, uh -huh. and I'm alongside on the vision path. Right, but you oftentimes you're way ahead in the future. Sure. Where I'm like, okay, sure. but I need your answer on this, which is happening like now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like a great example of that is you uh, <laughs> you found out about Smurfs thing. Like, yeah, uh -huh. that's the future of the thing. And Morgan uh -huh. and I are looking at it, and we finally realize it's like, oh, wait, that actually, that we literally can't do anything with it. It's not out at yeah. all. You're, yeah. Oh, oh, I, so you didn't, that wasn't go look right, out and Isaac a told me that, and he's yeah. like, dude, this is just, I'm like, I know, it just came out like last week. I'm just telling you yeah. about like the next thing that's going to be happening down the road. Right. And, and I'm like, promising oh, as a technology. I thought you were telling us we needed to <laughs> right, do to that. Go right. It. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not an actionable. Right. 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 That was right. a. Right. Here and trust me, about seven months from now, it's going to be super cool. I, I have a little uh, something I'd like to say in between here. Yeah. Um, I think this is something that maybe everybody should do for their team to see how everybody fits together. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to our channel. Drop a comment. What <laughs> Myers Briggs type you are below. <laughs> I am married to an amazing person and somebody I would deeply consider my best friend. Um, and I had her do this because she was really interested. So her, she did it and her and I are actual complete opposites, like from a percentage standpoint and letter, wow. um, everything, we are completely opposite. So, and we like everything, we have an amazing marriage and everything goes awesome. I mean, we, everybody has their riffs or whatever, but so I think like, I'm using that as an example of a relationship, obviously between her and I, but that could also go to an entire team of people to see how everybody interconnects and works together. So I just wanted, I just wanted to put that. I, I, I just texted her while we were doing this and I was like, hey, what were yours? And I looked at it and I was like, oh, got it. We are the exact opposite. So uh, we had a small little bump there, but uh, I'd like to show uh, this one right here. Here we go. That's that's the <laughs> that's the video I was trying to make happen. Oh my Man. gosh! Man, <laughs> oh, that was so good. I'm gonna just play it one more time. Oh man! Yeah, something that about us and jumping on tables. How, we love to do that. That's how I picked him. But that picture. photo does not do him a justice. It does not, and I'm sorry. Stern. You're very beautiful, and I'm sorry that. Uh, but. <laughs> But I couldn't resist uh, having Jay uh, I'm pretty happy jump with it. On, on the table. <laughs> it's just like, Hello. that's so hilarious. All right, Emma, the problem solver. So strengths, practical, adaptable, and skilled at finding efficient solutions to challenges. Weaknesses may struggle with expressing emotions and may appear detached at times. Communication style, direct, concise, and focused on facts and logic. How to work best with Emma, provide clear expectations, respect her need for autonomy, and value her practical insights. 
So you'll notice here you've got thinking and sensing at a 3% and introvert at 6% and perceiving is your highest at 16%. So yeah, what do you, how do you react to such a thing as this? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like my weaknesses are pretty spot on. I feel like I can come across very... Like the picture. <laughs> like, exactly. Um, I think I can levity. come across sometimes like unemotional and just like maybe intimidating, um, which I'd never want to come across, but I think just naturally I can come across that way. Um, and then I feel like my communication style, I can be maybe too direct at times where it doesn't come across in a way that I would want it to. Um, yeah, and like focused on like the facts and logic and, but I, I feel like communication style, I can, I think as time goes on, I've become more direct, yeah. um, which has its strengths and weaknesses. But um, I you, feel well, like... Especially with uh, Emma, like with Isaac and I, sometimes we'll get in the weeds with like <laughs> the Unreal Meetup or whatever yeah. it was. And you're like, guys, it's not that complicated. It doesn't like, matter. Yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, I feel like um, sometimes things get a little too complicated and then we go into the weeds or we start talking about something that's not even pertaining to what we're supposed to be talking about. And I kind of usually will step in and be like, okay, let's go back to what we were talking yeah. about in the beginning because now we've veered off into a completely different direction. It's gotten to a point where I can literally predict that you're about to do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I was going to say is uh, your strengths, uh, your practical strengths combined with your communication style of being direct, concise, and focused on facts and logic. Yeah, a lot of the times I hear you say, okay, well, let's like reel it in and like actually talk about the thing that's actually important right now because here especially in one meeting like you guys are saying we can just one light bulb goes off on in a distant part of the brain and we just expand on that for 30 minutes and it was like all right uh actually this is what we need to be talking about right now well yeah. i wish we had a picture of the uh candy um setup that that emma has evolved and created over over the time that she's been dealing with it because we have this huge uh amazing display of snacks that uh, in these jars it looks like Willy Wonka's candy shop or something that uh, Emma has created and everything has labels and it just is always full and colorful and and beautiful and every time clients come in they just love it and they're like oh my goodness they feel like they're in you know candy land or something but that has evolved uh, the the but it's a what it is it's a, an efficient solution to that pro yeah that problem of well, how do we how do we provide fun, exciting snacks to clients? Uh, well, and to us too. <laughs> but uh, it's it's a really great solution. So that and you, I've, there's been several other things that you've done that with, and where you find uh, a, a very workable solution mm. uh, to a, to a problem that's very practical and um, and adaptable. I mean, you can change it at, at, as needed. But I, I like that systematizing. Um, uh, ability, I guess, yeah. is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's great. Clear expectations. Uh, early on, Emma started, and uh, you were you were just it was me, Tyler, and you, <laughs> and uh, and it was like uh, you expressed a lot early on of like, uh oh, I'm not really sure what I should be doing today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Super unclear, right? And so I was I was not serving you well, uh, but we were just overloaded with just trying to keep everything running. But you're like, where are my clear expectations? And then on filming days, you're like, love filming days, super obvious, mm. exactly the steps I'm supposed to do because you've got clear expectations of what that is. Um, and you have tons of autonomy inside those expectations. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, yeah, just Emma's just gonna do whatever she needs to do. Um, I know that she'll do the right thing for us. And, um, and yeah, so I, I've definitely felt both of those things of like, yeah. Um, uh, for sure. So it's great. Yeah. Problem solver. Problem solver. Yeah. The problem solver. I, I love collaboration and I love like sitting with someone and doing something, but I'm also completely okay sitting and doing my own thing uh -huh. and just like I'm totally at peace with that too. Yeah, funny. Um, yeah, that's great. 
So, all right. So, hey, if you're uh, interested in doing this, we took it on a different site, but I found this one was a little better. It's just called 16personalities.com. It's not like the test is better, but it's just a little prettier and has less scammy ads. Instead, <laughs> it does a, uh, it just pitches you to pay money, but you can still get your four letters and put it in. And so uh, this has gone long. So I just want to, I'm just going to say this and not demo this, but you can just go full screen on me, I guess. But um, what I want you to know is here's what I did. I went to Claude, which is one of the AIs or chat GPT. In this case, I just happened to use Claude. I put Tyler and then I put ENFP. Is that right? Mm -hmm. ENFP, uh, J, ENFP in their scores. Okay. So I put everybody's name, their letters and the per percents, you know, for each of them. And then I just said like, um, create some advice for me. Like talk to me about how I can better manage the team. And here's who everybody is. And uh, and now, you know, here's their role. And so wh what are things that would be better to help them or not? So just know it's insanely good. So then I, <laughs> I did it, um, which we'll probably talk as a team later, but to make this video kind of wrap up, uh, I gave it scenarios because there's some certain scenarios that have been kind of frustrating to different team members. And so I threw the scenarios in and I'm like, well, how would, uh, how, how do you think, um, you know, so-and-so would respond to this thing? And then it, it did an uncannily good job of predicting that. And then it gives really great suggestions on how to do that. So there may be like a hack here that I haven't tried yet. This is all very fresh. Uh, but it's like, I wonder if it's almost like you should have, if you're a team member or the leader, everybody's Myers-Briggs score in just a little note thing. You just copy it, paste it in, and then just describe the situation. Well, today, Emma said, blah, 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 blah. We're trying to figure out. And then Tyler said, and then Morgan said, you know, and you could just kind of put that in there and then be like, how should I handle the situation? Enter. It was insanely cool how good it did at that. So just know uh, there's a way to use AI to leverage this uh, to really give you some really Incredible. cool. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, hey, uh, just real quick, let's just uh, have everybody that's left, uh, both <laughs> Josh and uh, Kami had to step out for a different meeting. What, um, what's your reaction to this? How do you feel after seeing this and talking about yourself and talking about others? Give me just, I don't, not like a one word thing, but just like react to it. Do you feel more known, less known? Was this a useful part of your time? Do you think this is helpful to think of us in this way? Just just any reaction. We'll start with Jay. Oh man, I was hoping you were gonna go to somebody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think I learned, I, I, I think I learned what I already knew about myself, but uh, learned uh, everybody else's opinion on that, which helped me look at it with a, from a different perspective. How do you feel about yourself now after this? Um, I feel like I have the proper skill set to do what I feel my intentions are in working with the studio, yeah. but I also feel like I should dive a little deeper um, and try and figure out, uh, because there are things that have happened, like uh, with like me being angry about things, and like seeing seeing growth is is really important for me. So I've seen a lot of growth in my life with being able to forgive, and like accept with so like the old Jay would just like not do that. So I feel like this is just helping me really wrap all of that growth up into like one like kind of one way to look at it. All. Yeah, I'd, I would be fascinated <laughs> to, to learn more about how the different. Uh, personality types and uh, interact yeah so like what does it mean that there's four e's and three i's yeah. and yeah. Uh, surely as as long as myers briggs has been around there's people that have done a lot of thinking about how the the those things interact you know uh, so that that would be kind of interesting to me to learn more about i think it is interesting related to that that we kind of do have these pairings we'll end up in like jay and tyler you two are the the for lack of a better word the studio guys i don't know how to <laughs> you know you're this they're people on the stage doing the lot doing that thing all the time yep. and morgan and i will be the tech guys working on the thing it's like all of those pairings that have naturally occurred like morgan and i's only difference is our introvert extrovert scale in terms of like just pure letters you know um and so i think like a lot of that oh that's a good point. makes sense yeah. you know that we but i think it's interesting you then point out jay like your wife is the exact opposite of you and so i think uh there's a tendency for us to be around people who are like us but yeah. that doesn't necessarily improve us mm. and that being around people who aren't like us is actually what improves us because it is that kind of balance of ideas sometimes that helps 
point a specific way in the end because it's like if you have somebody who's super feeling and somebody who's super thinking the person who's super feeling is going to go well I feel like it should be this way and the person who's super thinking is like well we can't do it that way and then now the two of you can go but we can do this Hmm. you know like looking at it from both of those angles Um, and so I think it's good for us to remember kind of okay I talked with this person about it and we both were going to have approached the problem the same way Morgan can you uh map apple tv while we're doing this yeah yeah uh and so because of that i think that's some of the it's one of those things that i think is easy it's easier to be like well cool you know i gotta solve this problem i'm gonna talk about it and we come up with yeah the same solution i thought when i went into this and it's like but that's because i didn't talk to anybody who's outside of it mm-hmm. um and so, yeah I, I i know that's not very specific but i just think that's that's interesting so tyler how do you feel after talking about <laughs> yourself and what how, do you feel more known, less known? Yeah. I yeah. Think so. How do you to, feel to have it all kind of out on the table makes it makes it's like, okay, well, I, no, I, I think all that was accurate and it's nice to kind of have that out there. Cause, and, and it's helpful for me to see the other people's um, things. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I think it's, it's very helpful. Um, I, I would love to, I'd love to hear someone talk about people that have been experienced, like you've been thinking about Myers-Briggs for a lot longer even yeah. than I have. Yeah. But um, as somebody, as we get older hmm. and we learn to adapt, oh, I'm a high E, right. he's not, right. you know, or yeah. I need to be a little less E in this yeah. situation, yeah. a little yeah. more J, right. you right. know, uh, the, the long term, uh-huh. long yeah. uh, Myers-Briggs, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Uh, Is that something you feel like you need to hear about? <laughs> feel, it, it, I think that ought, that would be a good book for somebody well, to write. No, I that's that's that true like because I, I literally said, like, I, I wish I could go back 10 years yeah, and make yeah. myself take yeah. it to look at the difference. So that's really interesting for me because I did do something like this in college mm-hmm. and mine has stayed the same. Yeah. yeah. So I thought yeah. that was really interesting. That is interesting. interesting. So, so Morgan, react to this. How did you? Yeah, yeah, I think it really helped me understand how to communicate with everybody. Uh, I did some more research on your personality type, Andre, and it was more like you're going to be very like you're going to debate the, the things, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, right, like, right. well, I don't know if that's true. And that's been a frustration point at times. But now I know, okay, well, that's always going to be like... It's a part of the fault. process. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. The, part of the process. Yeah, Because totally. kind of we, yeah. we've, we've talked about how it's like, how do it because it can feel a little bit like well i'm not stupid i know what i'm doing like mm-hmm. you know you're telling me that wh- why do we have to do it this way and it's like no it's because i want you to like i'm asking is is that the only way to do it that's not me saying it can't you know you're stupid this is the wrong way to do it. it's me you know it's the question yeah right that's great isaac react to yeah i you know i think it's interesting i feel like for me it doesn't like looking at this doesn't necessarily I'm not sure what actionable advice I can get out of looking at my own personality type out of that. Okay. You know, like I'm not, I'm just not sure for me personally what to take out. It's like, okay, if one of the things is I'm taking on too much responsibility of a thing, like that's the thing that mentioned. It's like, but the thing has to get done and we're doing it. And I think our work environment here is often a, well, we're doing it Friday. Sure. So it has to be done by Friday. And I'm like, well, if that means I have to do six things, I'm going to do them because it's got to get done on Friday yeah, and I want to get paid. Uh, you know, yeah. like I want to yeah, keep yeah. living in my apartment. Yeah. Uh, um, and so I think it's hard for me to look at that and go, well, you know, in a in a environment where I was less focused on if it, if I were in an environment where it's less focused on those sorts of short and sudden deadlines then i think i'd have more of ability to go okay work on this this and this but i think we value that final product so much that often i'm like well i know i can do it so i just need to do it because i know it's going to get done the right way Mm, yeah um and it's hard for me to like back out of that with the way that we operate i think interesting um and then similarly i think you know most of hearing about how other people are i think it's roughly like yeah that lines up with what i would think I'm not sure for me, it's like, I kind of have already been, and I think this is indicative of, like, with my personality type, I already <laughs> have been thinking about that and figuring out how to adapt my way mm-hmm. I talk to different people Funny. on things, you know, so I already have thought about, oh, okay, you know, we're doing file structure of a thing. So anytime Jay is like, hey, Isaac, come look at this thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. We're going to go this, 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 and this. Or he'll be like, where should we put this? I'm like, great question. We'll figure that out together, you know, like, and, and I know that it's like, but I know that that thing 
helps him a ton. And I know that it's like, if he's, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll have something. It's like, oh crap, we got out of order on the thing. And it's not like, how dare you not follow the system? Usually it's like, oh, we didn't have a system for that. Okay. So let's think about what the system for that should be. Cause I had an intuitive understanding of, oh, that needed to go in this folder, but you put it in that folder. Why do you put it in that? I have a great example of this. Cause you and Emma did this the other day. Um, you both, when you put set, to, we're trying to tier kind of our sets internally of like knowing how much effort it takes for us to spin them up, so to speak. Um, and so it's like, there's a tier one, which is like, we've used this a million times. We know how it works. It's ready to go. Tier two is like, we've used it a few times or it's an unreal engine thing requires some effort. Tier three is like, we've literally never used it before, whatever. And in my mind, I'm like, cool. So you label it tier one, you label it tier two, you label it tier three. And if it's a tier one, you know that like it applies to tiers two and three in some way. Cause it's like, it, anyhow, it's hard to explain without fully explaining it. But I look at it and go, it should be labeled one, two or three. Emma and Jay both looked at it and said, well, it should be one, two, three, two, three, three. And I'm like, wait, why do you have to list two? If it's a one, I know it works in two and three. And if it's a two, I know it works in three. And if it's a three, I know it's only three. But like for you all, it's like, no, it needs to show all three of them at the same time. And it's like kind of that thing of like how you structure stuff, um, thinking some of that stuff through and like, oh, okay, huh. I need to like have a way to look at it from this other perspective so I know that I'm not just yep. like, yep, yeah. cool, you yeah. put it in folder E and then right. E's inside folder Z and Z's yeah. in folder That's four. And you're like, right. what are you talking about? That right. doesn't, you know. Yeah. That's great. Totally. That's a great one word or quick sentence. I'm just <laughs> Sorry. Kidding. I'm just messing with you. Just messing. No, that's that's such a that's whatever that's the such a, letters I yeah. have are. <laughs> ENFJ. <laughs> yeah, ENFJ thing to do. No, that's that's a great analogy. Uh, Emma, give me some feedback. Um, I think it helps with like the self-awareness of just your personality because I feel like every uh, everyone's that I saw I feel like really lines up with what I already know about them but it's good to see on paper especially with the weaknesses um, because it just helps you better understand where you can help somebody and work with someone better um, so I thought it was helpful and gives you insight to everyone's personality um, so I how do you feel cool. about yourself? I, I thought my, I, I thought it was pretty spot on. Um, yeah. Yeah. and especially with the weaknesses, cause that's something with like emotion and coming across detached. I feel like that's something I've struggled with mm. my entire life. So I feel like it was really spot on, but it's something that I have the awareness about, but I don't, but I can grow off of that mm -hmm. because it's not a trait that I love about myself, but it's just naturally kind of how I am. But I think you can kind of, I don't know, pivot and work on that. Would you all encourage, and you can answer kind of in unison, <laughs> I guess, on this, but would you encourage, if someone's watched an hour and whatever time of this, would you encourage them to do this? Do you think this oh, yeah. is a good use for staff time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For I feel sure. like it's a yeah. team bonding yeah, cool. like exercise almost. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. why I, in that little break, that's why I brought up like making Rachel do it and seeing, oh, that's powerful, understanding that we work yeah. opposite. So yeah. like we've all said, just getting to know how each other's works and being able to either, you know, push the gas when needed or press the brake when needed based on how you know that that person works. I love it. I've got a bonus. Uh, if you've watched this long and you're still watching, um, here's, so here's my prompt. So I just put in everybody's, this is in Claude, everybody's name and their thing. And then I just said, create an analysis of the team dynamics and strengths and weaknesses of the team. I think this is what you were talking about, Tyler, focus on what could create conflict and how they would solve it. So here's this like output. And so I'm not going to read everything, but just to kind of hit a couple of key things, diverse personality types consist of different types, which can lead to very blah, blah, blah. Uh, intuitive thinking. Most team members have a preference for intuitive thinking, which can help generate creative ideas and solutions. Balance of thinking and feeling has a mix of thinking and feeling types, which may help with both logical and emotional aspects. Weaknesses, potential conflict between the judging and perceiving types. Josh, Isaac, and Morgan have a preference for judging, while the rest of the team leans towards perceiving. This difference in approach may lead to conflicts regarding decision making, planning, and structure. Communication gaps between introverts and extroverts. Uh, you know, uh, make uh, Cami, Morgan, and Emma may struggle with having their voices heard uh, with the more extroverted people. 
Differences in information pro processing, team members with a sensing preference, Emma and Cami, may focus on concrete details, with, uh, while those with an intuitive preference may focus on the bigger picture. This can lead to misunderstanding and disagreement. Conflict, Josh, Isaac, Morgan may prefer structured plans and quick decisions, with the perceiving types uh, may prefer flexibility in keeping their options open. Solution, encourage open communication and compromise. Judging types can help set deadlines and provide structure while perceiving types can ensure flexibility and adaptability. So this is super funny because we have a thing coming up, a live event, and it's all around, we can't get all the information we need from the client. And so Morgan is feeling like, oh man, I've got to get this thing ready. And so you know these timelines and the things that you need to get done. And so you're trying to get the structure and the system in place to do it. And then I'm over here trying to say like, well, I think we need to make some systems around adaptability. Um, so it's just kind of an interesting, like, so I'm like, well, since we don't know, let's build systems around how to be more adaptable. Uh, so it's just interesting. So anyway, you can see more. I'm not going to keep reading it. But, um, you know, so I can I can now focus on the types of jobs needed and talk about the strengths and weaknesses of different types of jobs and whatever. Anyway, you get the idea. So uh, use AI, put your letters in, uh, create information about what your company is. And I think you're going to find some really fascinating and, and tell it to like create some scenarios for it to, or tell it to create some scenarios. I have that as well, but we're, we're out of time. We've gone a long time. So, Hey, thanks for watching these. I hope this is super helpful to you. This has very little to do with, uh, video production. And it has everything to do with video production all at the same time. Hmm. Um, and so we're talking about growing a team. Uh, your team may not be full time. They may be contractors or, you know, you just bring them in one at a time, but still having them go through this process, it only takes about 10 minutes or less to go through the test. It's very easy. And so uh, something like that is just super valuable for you to know how to communicate better. Uh, so we're going to work on ways to keep this front and center for us for a little bit. So we really start getting a little more familiar of how we can best um, love and care for each other. We're trying to be excellent. We're trying to love people, we're trying to adapt and innovate. Or maybe it's be adaptable. We're working on that third one a little bit right now. And those are the, kind of the three things that we're focusing on. I hope this has been helpful. Wow. Uh, tell us your feedback. I'd love to hear what you think about this type of debrief. <laughs> Thanks for watching.